Sashi's gonna love Monday. He's gonna meet Sammy Hippie. Sure is. Like how we met him. Still in the car with us. <laughs> <laughs> He's still here, bro. Far <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, fly. I haven't been around here before. Oh, this is just like a little office. Hangover. Just... Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's a bad bar. Hangover. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we have the thirsty bar. So this is the official. Oh, we've got a, we've got a bit of a gathering here wow. for you, a few Liverpool fans. Yep. They're all waiting for us, Robbie. <laughs> oh, Please, wow. after, after you. Have you ever met my friend? Thirsty bar. Yeah. Hello. How are you, man? Very good, yes. thanks. Nice Come to meet you. Thirsty bar. Thirsty bar, yeah. <laughs> you, have you, to be, you, you, you have to be thirsty to yeah, get in now. Hello, mate. How are you? Probably not seeing you. Oh, yeah, that, you don't hold it for me, bro. Oh, no, you're sorry, bro. Sammy. Yeah. Sorry. Quick, come back and hold it. Hi. Hi. All right. Hello. Hi. 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 How are you? Do you mind if you play a game, Sashi? Anytime, man. Come, let's play. Sure. So, yeah. so Mr. <laughs> Happy is here. <laughs> So, 3-1, uh, we were talking about, you know, Liverpool needing to win something this season. Definitely. They have to win something this season? Definitely. We are going for all three cups. Yeah. Full. Hopefully, we will land one, especially the Premier League title. Yeah. yeah. That's the main, main title we are hopping on for more than 20 years. Yeah. Yeah, so. yeah we were talking on, uh, in the car that, uh, that, uh, that we need to keep hold of the players. We right. have. To, to improve the, the squad and, and uh, you know, to go forward. Mm -hmm. But then we need to win something. Exactly. And I think all the players want to win something in, in their careers. And uh, if this season goes that we don't win anything, then I would say a few, few players will be thinking next summer that, hey, I need to go some place, true, true. place that uh, maybe have, I have a chance to win something. But, right. but we are on the right path. But, and I'm sure that we win something to this season already. Yep. I agree with Sammy. You're, you're up. You're, yep. Is it Sammy? Or? No, no. No, Sashi. You sing Sashi? Oh, he's focusing. Oh, oh. He's, uh, he's a professional. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to win for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, being a centre half, have you been hugely impressed with the way Liverpool are defending? Yeah, but it's not, it's not only the defence. Yeah. I think we have a better balance in, uh, in the game. This yeah, season than than last season and and of course Van Dijk is a very uh, important player that he gives confidence to the other players. I think he gets the other players play better as well. Yeah. And of course the goalkeeper is one important factor to that as well that uh, that you trust the goalkeeper. Last night uh, mistake and and if you saw Van Dijk yeah. he stopped playing. Yeah. That he was sure, certain that he's going to get the ball. But yeah. you have to be always ready that if he, if he drops the ball, that right. he's there. Yeah. But if he was ready, I think he can clear the ball mm -hmm. when he dropped it. But, uh, but he was just uh, almost like turning right. his back yeah. Right. Yeah. to the situation. But, yeah. uh, but um, you have to always be ready that, uh, that something might happen. Yeah. So. You're up again. Your turn. My turn again. Shows how it's done again. We were, uh, we're struggling, bro. Oh, oh yes. yes! Look at this. Oh, no, it's it's. He's finished. got it already. Just it's uh, finished. How do you do the last one? Last one wherever. Or? Oh! I'm trying. To that was a reminder of what United is about this year. <laughs> <laughs> so close, but still don't know how to score. Is it now? I mean, I keep asking this to a lot of Liverpool fans, and I've asked this to Sammy as well. I know you will always like the fact that United are not doing well. Right. But. As a football fan, you look at them now. Is it to a point where you know you're like, okay, it's not funny anymore. It's becoming a disgrace, an absolute joke. True, I agree with you. Oof. I think like they should do something very uh, urgently you to think, overcome this you problem. You think Mourinho needs to go? I think. Oh, yeah. yeah. But as a regular supporter, I prefer him to be there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I said that last time. Yeah. <laughs> they, they asked that, uh, which, one, which one do you want uh, to go, Mourinho or Pogba? Yeah. Said, I want them both to stay. Because <laughs> 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 then United won't be successful. Exactly, exactly. Put, put us out of our misery. Can you finish this off for us? 
sort of now. No pressure. Because I mean, Roy Keane and Gary Neville said that well, they were in two different schools of thought. But Gary Neville, for about a month or two, has been saying, "Okay, fine. Maybe Jose might be having a problem, but it's the management yeah. Yeah. that is actually causing all this." As a player, when you play for such a big club, was there any a situation where you were like, oh. "Whoa, yes, for the win"? Come on, I have to call the pocket first, sir. <laughs> what was I asking? Oh yeah. Does it affect you uh, when you're on the? Yeah. Well done. Well done. Okay, okay. Let's uh, all just sit down now. You know, forget playing. <laughs> Bye. We'll start. We'll start the interview Bye. again. <laughs> See you next time. Yeah. But uh, did it ever affect you as a player when you saw all the management, the top player stuff messing around, and then does it go into the dressing room? The negativity? I don't. I don't think we uh, we had that. I don't think we had that. Uh, that there was uh, big problems or big fights or or, or manager was against uh, the the directors or whatever. I think uh, I think we had uh, quite good harmony always, always at the club. And, uh, and I don't know. Of course, when the folks so players will read papers. Yeah. They will watch TV when they are discussing about these matters, yeah. and they are aware what's, that something is not right or, or something. So, so I would think that those kind of things affect for sure. In your time, who was uh, I won't say your favourite, but who who was the best manager you worked with? Um, <laughs> oh, you know he's a Liverpool fan when he's got his name on the mug. <laughs> you want to know who Sashi is? This is Sashi. <laughs> what do you say? Sorry, I was just asking about the managers. Uh, I've been lucky that I've had good managers. Yeah. That uh, that I've learned uh, a lot from every one, each one of them, and and each one of them has their strengths and their weaknesses. Yeah. Uh, I would say, at Liverpool, I had two managers. Julia and, and Benitez. I would say combination of the two <laughs> would be the best manager. Yeah. That uh, that Benitez was a, a perfectionist in the tactical side. Yeah. That he, he wanted. Uh, I learned a lot from him in the tactical side of the game. Uh, but uh, Julia, then on the other hand, maybe tactical, he was a little bit weaker. Yeah. But then he had the man management and and. He had the, the the magic to to keep the atmosphere very good. Yeah. So uh, so maybe combination of the right. of the two would be perfect. would be a perfect manager. But yeah. uh, and you saw Klopp at the end of the game running and hugging the players, you know, going up to the cop air and then pumping his fist. Is that something you drives you on as a Liverpool fan? He's actually bonded with what the club is all about. Yeah, exactly. You look at it like it gives you a feelings that all the players are more like a family over there, you know. Each of them are getting a hug after the match, you know. So it indirectly motivates them to perform better. Yeah. You know. And like Jose who's only hugging Fellini. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the truth. It's the only person he hugs. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Uh, how long would you give Klopp if he doesn't win anything this year? Another two more season? Or two more? Two more. Yeah. And then would you uh, ask him to Repeat it, be replaced or? Yeah, definitely. I will give him uh, easily two more years if he couldn't uh, land any title this year. So once the two years ends, we need to find someone new. A different. Uh, that will take him to five or six years. No, definitely no. We can't be like waiting. No, I'm saying in total that would mean in another two years he's been yeah. there for five or six in total. Right. And look like Pochettino. He's been at Tottenham for six years. Hasn't still hasn't won anything either. Right. So they've got the new stadium. A lot of managers who have done well, but the time is ticking for them. The fans want a trophy. Right. Yeah, but I think uh, I think the fans uh, they don't like to analyze yeah. actually what's going on. Yeah. I think Pochettino has done done well with Tottenham. Very well. That the uh, at some point uh, they they signed uh, young English players. Right. I don't think the English players. I I, I don't think they are at their peak now. That they will be stronger in the one or two years, yeah. but uh, but they are they they Pochettino has done well uh, for Tottenham. That, uh, that he 
he has changed them to one of the contenders, but I don't think they are ready yet. No? You want to ask anything to Sammy? He's right here. I got, a, I got one question to Sammy. How was your feeling when you when you need to hand away your captaincy to Gerard after a year after a year or two successful season with Repo? So and uh, immediately you need to hand over to Gerard. How was your feeling then? Um, we were just discussing about this in the car, Axel. So, um, I remember the the, the moment that uh, that Julio told me that I I need to give the or he is giving the captaincy to Stevie. That I I remember that afternoon. It was after after training. Uh, he took me in his office and he told me that, and I said, Yeah, fine. Whatever whatever you decide, I accepted his decision. And uh, then I tried to find Stevie, but he was already gone. And, um, and then the next morning when I came in, I saw Stevie's car, car, uh, car there and I knew that he was somewhere, but I couldn't find him. <laughs> I don't know where we, maybe he, was, where he, was maybe he already knew and he was scared that you're going <laughs> yeah. to hurt him or something. <laughs> and so, uh, so then just before training, we had uh, our boots uh, in the, like uh, places there and I took my boots and I saw him uh, tying his laces on the, on the bench there just to, to go out. And I went to sit next to him and I think he, he was turning his back uh, to the, or turning his head to the other way that he doesn't see me. And, and I just said to him uh, that, that uh, congratulations, that uh, you fully deserve it. And, and uh, if you need help uh, with anything, I will always be there to help you. And, and I think he was relieved uh, as well that I took it, I took it the right way. Uh, I, I, it, it was a it was a great great honor for me to be a captain of, of a great great club uh, as Liverpool. But uh, but then I knew as well that what it means to Stevie, and, and uh, from that day on, I think mentally he stepped uh, step uh, many steps for he went many steps uh, forward, and and uh, he grew up as a, as a person. I think uh, when he when he got the arm. As a fan, did you think? Sammy should have kept the armband for a bit longer or? Definitely, he's the yeah. best bargain ever by Liverpool. 2.6 million? Yeah, but uh, I, can, I, can tell you, I can tell you that that moment on, uh, I started to perform much better as well on the field. That some, somehow burden, burden from yeah. my shoulders went. One you didn't that, know you were carrying? Uh, I knew, I knew because uh, I'm, I'm taking even if I'm not a captain, I'm taking every defeat very seriously and very uh, like personally. personally. Yeah. And uh, and uh, then when you are a captain, then you I took it even more personally. So uh, so that was a heavy burden for me to carry. And, and actually, from that day on, my performances went <laughs> went better. And, and I think uh, I think it was a good decision of Julia to do it because Stevie went better and you went better, better yeah. and I went better yeah. so and did he ever come to you and ask for advice um, I don't know directly yeah. if he came to ask me but I was I, I got along with him very very well and, yeah. and uh, I tried to help him as, as good as I can but, uh, but he's he was a good leader and, and uh, he was leading with his example on the field as well. Uh, sometimes he was carrying the whole team <laughs> and, uh, and he uh, became a very, very uh, good player, best player I've played with and, and almost the best player of my time in football as well. When you yeah. time was coming to an end at Liverpool before you went to Leverkusen, they offered you a coaching role, is that yes. correct? Do you look back now and think, I wish I'd taken that opportunity, or you, no. you, you were very happy with your decision. Um, I, I was very happy. Uh, I could have stayed in England to play yeah. because I knew that I can still play in the high level. Yeah. When when Benitez said to me that uh, he doesn't give me a playing contract anymore, mm. so uh, so was I he easy to work with, Rafa Benitez? Sorry, was he an easy person who you could, you could approach and talk to? Easy person yeah. to talk to. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, he wasn't uh, an easy person. He he listened to you, but then his opinion was always the uh, correct one. <laughs> but um, but yeah, I, I don't have I don't have any bad feelings of anything that uh, 
uh, that uh, you know I knew that I, I could I could play for a few seasons more I was only 35 years old so <laughs> so uh, I knew that I, I had a few years uh, in me uh, still and, and uh, then came this opportunity to go to Leverkusen that, uh, that uh, Rudy Böll and, and uh, Misa Reske came to my house and they said that uh, they have a young team that uh, they need uh, some experience to the team and for me the, what they said to me was uh, felt right move for me and, yeah. and I signed the deal I think week after and, and uh, I, that was a good decision I, 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 couldn't, I wouldn't change any decision mm. in my playing career in my managerial career what, I, what I've done that, uh, that sometimes uh, maybe it's not perfect uh, decision what you make but you learn from yeah. from the not the bad decisions but uh, not perfect decisions yeah. Well, Sashi, we want to say thank you for uh, coming on the show. We hope you've enjoyed your time with Sammy and for your time on the show, we'll get Sammy to present you with this official man on the street wow. t-shirt. I'm sure you can find a nice spot to hang it up. Yep, somewhere over here. In here. <laughs> but right. uh, you, you, didn't, you didn't print uh, the chassis anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you got to print his name on that one. <laughs> oh, Sashi's mug, uh, his boss. Yeah. How good was that? Sammy Hippie on the show. As you can see, he's very, very busy signing autographs, taking photos. But if you want to be on Man on the Street... It's very simple. Head over to our Instagram account. It's manonthestreet.tv. Send us a message. If you want to meet your legends, such as these people over here, the lovely KL Copites meeting Sammy Hippier, it's as simple as that. And don't forget to give our bank account. So they send us some money <laughs> and... No, I'm just kidding. Send us a message, meet your legends and... You know, Robbie, it's been fun. I'll be walking this side, eh? <laughs>